Well, it, the NBA season is over, but now we enter kind of like the business. We'll call it the business part of the season. And who better to come on and talk a little NBA shop than my boy, one of the originals on the ETOF 21 Sports Podcast, Sterling from Silver Star Sports. Sterling, how are you doing today, my man? I'm awesome, my friend. Thanks for having me. Uh, get to the association part of the NBA. Yeah. First of Exciting. all, let's just, is that, I need to ask, is that a old school GP, old school camp? Like yeah, so this is an old school Seattle Supersonics, but it's Kevin Durant from oh. his rookie season. Oh. So I'm rocking the throwback jerseys. I have to say, my man, your jersey game has been on point. <laughs> I, I have a big collection. I've probably spent way too much money, to be honest. But uh, yeah, no, I've got a, a bunch of throwbacks. And every time you have me on, I'll try to wear some new one, you know. I mean, that you're, you know, I'll have to stuff up my game. I'll have to, I'll have to dig something <laughs> out. But I'll tell you what, I bet you don't have a Davis Mills autographed Houston, Texas jersey. I think you got me there. You got me beat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to talk NBA. But before we talk NBA, we got, we're recording this on Tuesday night podcast comes out Friday. We did get some tragic news. I got the text message this morning. Um, Biggie, Caleb Swagan passed away this morning. Um, They're saying it's natural causes. And this one gets me because you hear the stories about how when he was in Utah, you know, homeless shelter, uh, like seeing people like fight over crack at homeless shelters, seeing people sh- like shoot up, living under bridges. And then to make it to the NBA, like really says a lot about him as a person after like everything he grew up through, everything he went through, you know, went to Purdue, graduated with a degree from Purdue. Um, you know, just, just, just a sad, a sad ending, you know, only 25 years old, man. sad ending. Yeah condolences out to his family for sure and just yeah. seeing how hard he worked on and off the court to get where he was um, and prayers out to his family the thing that got me is in his limited time with the kings you know he would do stuff where he would you know give kids that were in the same um situation he was growing up um he would you know get them to an nba game and that's something that you know you can never take away from those kids and really speaks a lot about him giving back to like less fortunate people and to show people that we're in that situation. Like you can to make it and achieve your dreams where they are. So rest in peace swag. You know, I had the privilege of meeting you twice. The two times I met you, you're a phenomenal dude. So rest in peace, brother. Um, So now, you know, we're going to change. We're going to talk a little NBA. Now we're going to dive into that. Sorry. I just wanted to, you know, say my rest in peace to someone I met. Um, the main thing going on right now is the NBA finals were done. We're going to talk about the Celtics, but I want to talk about Kyrie. What do you take from this quote that was based? I want to, I, what, what do you take of the situation? I guess that's first, but look, first let's do that. What do you take about the, the Kyrie Irving situation? It's it, there's so much to unpack here, but I think the first thing we should start about is just uh, rewind back a couple years when the Nets were a young upstart playoff team. They had the best team chemistry. You saw all those videos of them celebrating each other on the bench. And they sold that for these three guys, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden. And it now looks like in a span of five months, you might lose two of the three. You know, It's just uh, crazy. Uh, how much has gone on with this Nets organization. I can't wait for a 30 for 30 on it in a couple years, you know, to see all that went down behind the scenes. This is the thing that stuck out for me. A, you're completely right. When that happened, people were talking about, oh, you know, all these championships are going to win. Reality of the situation is those three didn't make out of the second round. Um, They came out, I think the quote was, like smooth the sand because I'm hearing that the Nets want to only give Kyrie two years. Kyrie wants four or five. Kyrie wants a little bit more stability. Um, I've heard like you have these people in the media saying that like Stephen A saying that Kyrie wasn't Durant's first pick. And then you got Jay will saying how close these guys are, how they're like brothers. So it's like, I really feel there's so much misinformation out 
in the market, in the media market, we really don't know what's going on here. Absolutely. Especially with a guy as secluded as Kyrie, you don't really know what's going on, I feel like. Now, here's my question to you. Let's just kind of think about the roster right now. With what they have, they're going to bring back Joe Harris, obviously, which I think is a big piece. Um, You know, they have Curry. Uh, They have Dragic. They have Bruce Brown. They're going to get Ben Simmons back, allegedly. Do you kind of, like, look at what their roster is going to be for next year? Is that enough? It's hard to say, but I feel like in the Nets scenario – I would be hard pressed not to run it back with everyone there. You know, like if Kyrie's playing like all the games next year, I'd want to see how that team actually performs before I, I ha- like ship him out somewhere else. You know, but that's they have. Some, sorry, go ahead. No, go no, no, finish it. Finish your thought. No, I, I just feel like they have a decent shot. I don't know if it's good enough to top the Celtics or the Bucks or the Heat next year, but they can definitely compete with those teams. Yeah. You know? I just, I don't know. Like, this is this this is my thing. Like, I really think missing Harris was a huge thing for him. Missing Harris was big. Um, they got Curry, which I think is great. Um, I just don't feel they have enough size. Um, they're very liable on the defensive side of the ball. I don't know with how great Irving and Durant are if they can beat the Bucks. Because I'll say it right now, I think the Bucks are the best team in the East going into next year. Yeah, I mean, they were on the – they had Boston on the ropes. And if Middleton no, was there – Middleton. Yeah, with, if Middleton was there, Middleton – I mean, the Bucks would probably be represented. No Middleton East. and Grayson Allen playing north of 26 minutes per game. I mean, we have to remember that. Um, But the one of the big things is, is they may trade Kyrie. Now, I want to bring up the, the, the trade machine. I have Kyrie right here. Um, team two. I just want to go through and get your get your opinions on like teams you think we think could trade for him. Okay, so looking at your screen right now, my he he doesn't fit the Heat culture. Um, Celtics. Nope, been there, done that. Bucks. Just no way. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. Seventy six. Sixers have their own problems. Raptors. Doesn't fit. Bulls. This is interesting. Uh, yeah, I could see uh, something with Zach Levine. That's that's something right, we could come back let's, to. Let, let, let's click here. Now, what do you think it would take to get to get um to get Kyrie Levine? Obviously, there'd be like some sort of sign sign and train, right? Mm-hmm. But you'd have to give me more. Who who are you giving? Would you would you throw in Lonzo? Lonzo and Levine for Kyrie. You'd have to throw. Do you know the update on Lonzo's knee? Because I know it was like really bad a couple months ago. Yeah, that's true. He's not going to be a hundred percent. You had Kobe White, a young point guard. Yeah, Kobe Kobe White. Um... Let's throw in Kobe White. Um. They're not good. Let's let's just do that and save some picks, okay? Okay. We'll do that, and then we'll go down here. I can't find the picks. My fault. There you go. Picks. We'll throw in a twenty twenty six first rounder. Yeah. We'll throw in a twenty twenty eight first rounder. How about that? As we do these, it's going to be super interesting to see what Kyrie's value is, just given his history and his dilemmas. Um, a lot of teams, some teams might value him highly, and other teams would stay so, far away. You know? So this would be interesting. You know, the Bulls would definitely, like, an Irving, DeRozan type of backcourt. Um, maybe the Bulls move um, Busacek for Dobie Hayen on DeAndre Aiken. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think an Irving, DeRozan, D. Aiken, I think that, like, quote-unquote, big three, I think that would be interesting in Chicago, don't you? 
Yeah, I think especially for Chicago, it seems like Zach Levine has one foot out the door. So if they could recoup um, losing him and get a player like Kyrie Irving, I think that'd be a win for their franchise. You know? um, let's can, there's no way the Cavs are going to do it. Now, this is an interesting for one for me. Okay. Now, I listened to Jay Will do an interview this morning. And the inter- interesting thing was, Jay Will said that Kyrie is only going to go someplace where he's the alpha. I don't think he's the alpha in in Brooklyn. Do you? No, not in Brooklyn. Certainly not. It's Katie. Now, this is a trade that is interesting to me. Everything I hear says that the Hawks front office is upset they decided to run it back. They thought they needed to do more. With how Irving plays, I really think that the city of Atlanta would take to him. You throw in, like, throw in a John Collins. You throw in a, where is he? Um, Kevin Herter. I know the Hawks might be looking to offload Clint Capella the, uh, uh, to give yeah. a Kong Wu some more minutes. Oh. Throwing a Conwu, so what's that? Um, then I've also to- heard that the Nets want or are, are reluctant to pay Nick, or Nicholas Claxton. Yeah, all right. I don't want to pay him more than the mid level exception, is something I read. All right, so does this work out? All right, so we need to add about 20 million. Um, see, this is where it gets tough, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. This is where it gets tough. Um, they really don't have that much stuff. Um, fine, let's throw in a Bruce Brown. What do we got here? Um, 56 and 30. Jeez. Um, yeah, yeah. You could take some guys off. I was just throwing around some rumors I heard. What was he throwing a trade exception? I don't even know how to throw in the trade exceptions here. Um, so, you know, obviously try this trade; it's not going to work. Um, in this in this hypothetical world, do you think a Kyrie Trey Young oh, that work could work? Look at that. I, I mean, would just hate that backcourt. That would backcourt that would backcourt be backcourt terrible. Too, but here's here's the thing: everything I'm what I'm hearing out of Atlanta is the Hawks are having buyer, I'll say buyer's remorse from signing Collins to that contract that they were utterly disappointed by the season and they're kicking themselves for not making moves because they feel they're not good enough to win right now. And Trey Young was all on Twitter yesterday saying, I want to win a championship. And I guess my point is this, you look at the team right now with this trade I just threw out there, Clapella, Collins, Herter, you're 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 subtracting this, but you're adding these guys, Claxton, Brown, Irving. You can re-sign Hunter, get more, get more run for Hunter, because there's no Herter for his minutes. Do you think this trade makes both teams better? I I could see there's a world where it could. I don't think it would work out for both teams. Like, honestly, I think the Nets are better with Kyrie if he's actually playing and engaged. I think the Hawks, it would, yeah, it would make them a better team, but that backcourt just scares me. Like, on a night in, night out basis, having yeah. one of them, both of them on the floor in crunch time, like, it would be. It would and be. then to your point, would Kyrie be the alpha in Atlanta? I think that's Trey Young's franchise through and through right now. So I don't know. Okay. But that's um, why it's such an interesting. Situation. Yeah, just because these are two guys they want to get out uh, offload. They need to offload him so that way they can create more minutes for Hunter. Um, all right, so let's continue here. You know, we're down to the Hornets. I don't, I don't think the Hornets would do it. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you take? Let's segue from Kenny Atkinson deciding not to take the Hornets job because I have an interest I have a very interesting theory on this. 
I thought it was super interesting because wasn't it like announced that it was a done deal? He was signed yeah. and then all of a sudden just backtracked all that. I wonder what happened there. Uh, you said you heard rumor about it. I heard he didn't like Ball's work ethic. And then he went back and he thought it over and he said, this is going to be my second time coaching. If I don't get this right, I'm probably never going to be a coach in the league again. So that's why I decided to go back, which which to me makes sense. Yeah, that's a good business decision on his part. <laughs> you look at it like this. Hornets are in a tough spot, man. They're in a tough spot. They got all these young guys. They're going to have to start pay- overpaying for these young guys. Because the last thing you want to do is have someone like Bridges, someone you've developed, go to, let's say, the Pistons and ball out, and the Pistons take care of your developmental process. You know what I mean? Like, they they have all these young guys coming up. They're going to have to start forking over some money. Yeah. So – And then the Hornets, they, uh, they need a center. I think – uh, just to get away from it for a little bit, but like a team like or a player like Miles Turner on the Hornets would be perfect. And I, yeah, just, yeah. I just want to see that trade happen. Yeah. The Knicks. I I I think it would work, but I don't just think they would trade him cross city. I don't so I think I think that's off. The Wizards, I think the Wizards would do it in a heartbeat, but one thought on the yeah, Knicks, sure. too. Um, Would you do a I've, deal for Irving trade straight up? If I'm the oh. Nets, yeah. If you're the Wizards? No. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. Um, for the one thing about the Knicks, I wouldn't like it for the Knicks if they got Kyrie, just because I feel like they're trying to skip steps of the process. I think we've seen so many teams fail recently that try to artificially create these um, super teams, even though the Knicks wouldn't be a super team, but they're just skipping steps in the development process. I say just let R.J. Barrett run the team, um, let Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, those guys grow. No need, no need to jump to be the fifth seed in the East here right now. So, um, Pacers? I don't. There's no way he wants to go to Indiana. No. I mean, if if they want to sell some more tickets, they had the lowest tickets in the NBA. I heard, so. But I mean, like, my I guess my thing is like, do you really think Kyrie's going to go to Indiana? Yeah, I don't know. He would retire before he goes to Indiana. Um, oops, sorry. Um, Which, if you remember last time we were talking about Kyrie, I just feel like he's one of those players that has always wanted to retire early. So I wouldn't be surprised if this all ends up that the Nets don't deal him. They work out like a two, three-year deal. And then after that, Kyrie's just like, yeah, I've played basketball. I've done everything I wanted to. So Detroit, no way. Detroit's set with Cade there, and they're not going to do it. I feel you go to Orlando, but I don't think Orlando would do anything because they do, they do have that young nucleus. Yeah, Orlando has the money to like theoretically make it work, but – They've got so many guards that they just got to figure it out themselves. You want to talk about a team in the in a pickle real quick? Ugh, yeah, tell so, me. So, A, you have to decide what if you want to re-sign Mo Bamba. B, you got to decide what to do with Jonathan Isaacs because the, the kid is always up and hurt. And three, you have to decide who you're going to take at the draft with the top pick. You know, that, like, this is an interesting – Excuse me, a little crossroads for the Magic. Um, what about a Paul for Irving straight up? I think the Suns have gotten too far to do that, to disrupt the chemistry like that. Um, oh, Grizzlies, Warriors, uh, Maverick, no. Yes. I saw a hypothetical Jazz trade, but I feel like the Jazz are sort of like Indiana. Like I, I don't think Kyrie would be okay going there. Nuggets, no. Now this is the interesting one for me. Hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. Boom. So obviously, um. 
it would be a mix of D'Angelo. You would have to throw in Beverly. Okay. And then I'm thinking Beasley, something like that. Some, like a package kind of like this. Okay. Now, what do you think of that? I mean, an Irving Towns, Anthony Edwards, I, I that's kind of interesting. And I really think with A-Rod there, I think that that he, he would go there because A-Rod is a big name. I, I I can see that. I can see a world where that happens. Um, I, don't I don't love it, rise, but just trade would it. you do it if you're the Timberwolves? If I'm the Timberwolves, I feel like where with, with the roster I have right now, I can't win it. But if I get a player like if I if I'm a rod thinking, if I get a top. 10 player, top 15, wherever you rank them, player like Irving to agree to be traded to Minnesota. Long term, this is going to help me get players like that here. And then I can have him and Edwards. You can say what you want about, you can, you can totally say what you want about Kyrie, but he's won a championship. And he can like hopefully tell those guys what it's like to win a championship. Because hopefully now he's more mature and he learns from the mistakes he made in Boston. What say you? Yeah, um, I, I would like that big three. I think especially with D'Angelo Russell's contract, like how they're not, it's not a great contract to swap that and get a player like Kyrie Irving, who is top 15, top 20 player in the league. Failed. Uh, Failed. You know, I, you know, we'd have to kind of play around with that. Maybe like. Yeah. You know, maybe they end up keeping Beverly and it's just Angelo, Russ, Beasley and some picks. But the thing is, the thing we need to remember is this. And this is like the big, the big thing. Yes, you're getting Russell. But let's not forget, the Warriors flipped Russell and got Kaminga and Andrew Wiggins. And they're not winning a ship without Wiggins this year. So it's not so much... That move, it's maybe the move after it if you have a front-thinking GM like Bob Myers, which I think the Nets have. So, um, you know, just that also of- the Timberwolves uh, hired a bunch of people from the Nuggets who built that good roster, although yeah. it hasn't been healthy. Yeah, so yeah, um, we're thinking. So let's go here. The Clippers is an interesting one. Okay, let me throw this one out for you. I'm gonna send. Oh, no. I'm gonna send Luke Kennard to the Nets. Reggie Jackson to the Nets. Zubac get that center to the Nets. Trade to the Clippers. When I talk about the most like realistic trade destinations for Kyrie Irving, I think the Clippers is the most realistic because not only those three names that you have there, but also Norman Powell and uh, the Morris brother, they both make like the same amount, like 12 to 17 million, which are really good for getting contracts to match. Um, so they just have like a lot of assets that can be used to facilitate a trade for Kyrie. Now let's say the net, let's say the Nets hypothetically do this trade. Um, you know, let's 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 start over. Let me go back a screen. Um, oh shoot. Um, so team one will go. Where are they? The Nets. Team two, we are going to go with the Clippers. So if I'm um, the Nets and I'm looking at those players, those like five players per se that have those contracts, I definitely want? want like Norman Powell. Okay. Marcus Morris and um, assuming you're not going to pay Nick Claxton, then I'd want Zubak. And I think that would make the Nets a better team because the Nets don't have like a bunch of wings um, that can switch and defend. But if you imagine like a lineup of KD, Norman Powell, Marcus Morris, um, 
Joe Harris and like one or and Ben Simmons, that's a very switchable lineup that would be very good. And uh, well, who is running that point though? Simmons. Trust Simmons to be back. You know I hope. I, mean? I hope. Yeah. How many games, if you had to guess, do you think he plays next year? Fifty, if that. Hmm. I mean, I would like. This would be the package I would like. Much of that. And then ship over. I mean, you're bringing in Powell. You're bringing in Kennard. You're bringing in Jackson. You know what? I like Bruce Brown. Throw him in. You know, something like that. You know, that way, like, you're getting your point guard. You have a shooter in Kennard. Powell, who can do multiple things. A center in Zubek. If if I'm KD and I sit back and I have Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard, Zubak, Powell, Ben Simmons, a healthy Joe Harris, Seth Curry, am I, am I going to be able to compete? That lineup doesn't scare me like the rest of the East, but, I mean, it's possible. There's a, there's a world where they it all works out. So – if the Nets run, because I really feel the pressure's on right now, Durant to win a title. If I'm Durant and they trade Irving, and I'm looking at these four, or you know, we put Marcus Morris in here and we take out um, Kennard and Jackson, am I going to force a trade? Yeah, that's something they got to think about. That. That's ultimately why I think nothing will come to pass with Kyrie Irving, um, trade-wise, because they have to consider that Durant factor. Their hands were kind of tied, and they're at his mercy because they traded all these assets to get him. Yeah. Um, No way he's going to the Pellies. No way to the Spurs. For him going to the Lakers, I feel, would just be the ultimate F you to – to KD. I don't feel he's going to do that. Um, plus, like, let's be honest. The Nets are going to take Westbrook. You know what I mean? Like, there's just no way. Um, the Lakers really don't have the assets like, to facilitate any trade. Kings, they have no, no. Trailblazers, no. No, no, no. So, like, honestly, like, you and I are looking at it. We say the Clippers. We said, what, maybe five teams at most? The T-Wolves. Well, I mean, obviously the Magic would, Pacers would, I think the Wizards would, I'll say the Hawks. So five teams. We got five teams that would trade for Mr. Kyrie Irving. Um, So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with him. Now, the next thing, the next team I want to talk about, and I'm pulling them up right here is the Boston Celtics. Hey, let's talk about this finals. What stood out for, well, first of all, I'm really hoping you watched my betting preview show, the NBA finals, and you put a little cheddar on Wiggins 80 to one to have the most rebounds. I really hope you listened to me on that one. Wow. You call that. (laughs) Um, I wish I did now. (laughs) um, What do you think of this team? I think this team is in a good spot. I was looking ahead at uh, their contract situation, and they have most of the guys under contract for a couple of years. Um, they're young. Um, they should be really proud of where they are. They showed like a lot of mental fortitude. It, it's it's no small feat to be able to turn a team around like that. Um, I think moving forward, it's hard to see a path where they get dramatically better, but I also don't think they need to. I think they have less questions to be answered than a lot of the other Eastern Conference contenders, if that makes sense. See, this is my thing with them. Now, hear me out. I'm actually going to remove this screen so we can talk like this for a second. A couple things stood out. A, that game five situation, it was tied or they're up by one at the end of the third. 
excuse me, end of the third. Tatum has the ball in his hand. He initiates the offense. He goes with nine seconds left. Quarter's running out. Goes too soon. Throws it to Brown. Brown takes a shot up with six seconds left. Um, miss, go down, pool, throws up a three, goes in, and now you're down by three, four, whatever. I really felt that kind of swung the series, and I really feel like not having a lead guard hurt them. If you look at them, they were three and five in games that had um, what I, what's the term? Clutch games to end the season. Um, and even you look at the Miami game seven, Marcus Smart was just jacking up threes early in the shot clock. I really feel, and I love Marcus Smart, not having a lead guard is hurting them. Yeah, uh, I could definitely see that. Um, they put, have to put so much playmaking, the onus of the playmaking on Jalen Brown, who doesn't have the ball handling abilities to do that. And then Jason Tatum's decision making this entire playoffs has been kind of kind of suspect. Another thing that I also think is super important to talk about is Jason Tatum's shot selection. Like, I feel like too often he just played into the Warriors' hands and he was going to take a step back mid-range contested jumper. And I just don't think that's a sustainable recipe to win a championship. Obviously, they are two wins away. But I just feel like as the Bucks get healthy, as the Heat come back and other teams figure this out, he's got to figure out more ways to be more effective, you know, rather than taking these off-balance contested shots. Like, yeah, when they go in, they're great. But when they're not falling, what else is he going to do? You know, I really feel that he took a huge. Everyone was ready to anoint him. Um, the next person, but you know, after you know what I mean, like after um, after what he did, like I can't. You know, I just I just can't do it. You know what I mean? I just can't anoint him after what I saw from him you know just just i i really felt he took a step backwards just in the play in the in the playoffs yeah i think nba twitter is just too re- reactionary um to like too ready to anoint people before they proved it time and time again so now the big thing that came out was the and this this made my day when i saw this you know how tatum after game seven tweeted out what he tweet out to what no, what he what he texted Kobe and then took a picture of it and posted it. I got you. Did you see this? <laughs> uh, I've seen a bunch of different variations of this. I've seen him like text like Kwame Brown instead of that. Like people are too funny. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like Sorry, these people. No worries, all good. Uh, so, I don't know. I really feel he took a st- step back. I get it. He's only 24. I get it. I understand it. But if you're a first-team all-NBA player, before going into game six, you can't be 5 of 21 in the fourth quarter and Andrew Wiggins be 5 of 6 the last game. That just doesn't cut it for me. And I think you're right. I think he really forces the shot way too much. He did become a better playmaker toward the season, but during the playoffs – it just wasn't there. And I really feel that if Middleton was there, they would have lost the Bucs. Um, Jalen, my issue with Jalen Brown is he sometimes looks like he's dribbling a dribbling a uh, football. Yeah, like, those handles are super loose. And I'll tell you what. If I'm Brad Stevens, there's one trade I'm looking to make. And this one's going to shock you, my friend. Okay. We need a point guard, right? We need someone with experience that's going to get people in position. You know what? I forgot what team. What team does – I thought Rubio played for the Cavs. Am I, am I totally effing up my, my thing here? Uh, go down. He should, should should be there. Um, I thought Rubio played for him. I'm messing this up, and I am sorry to everyone watching. Um, Cap- uh, Pacers. Okay, so Pacers. So here we go. So Rubio, boom. Give me Rubio to the Celtics. Um, you know what? I would trade back. I would send them. 
you know what? You'd have to get rid of Smart or Derek White because you're not going to run the run those three. I like Smart. I think Smart's yeah. integral to what they do. So I'll send Derek White to them. Does this trade work? Trade. So yeah, I mean a Derek Wright for Ricky Rubio. I feel Rubio would come in. He'd be the adult in the room. He'd get everyone in the right position. And we need to remember, before he got hurt, <coughs> the Cavs were a top four team in the East. And he was playing really good basketball. He was playing really good basketball. And he doesn't need to start. He can come in, play 20-some-odd minutes. I really think a player like Ricky Rubio, to kind of make sure, like the little things, like not going too fast in the shot clock at the, at the end of a quarter. I think kind of feel like that is what they need. Um, I'm really interested to see the next step Robert Williams takes. I really like him a lot. Um, but they need more depth, man. You know, they really need more depth, dude. Like, Yeah, they couldn't play Peyton, Peyton, Peyton Pritchard at some points. He was just unplayable. And here's my thing. Everything I hear, and I, I have a friend that works for the Celtics. Everything I hear is how many records Naismith has broken shooting after practice. That's all I hear. And he can't, and like playing, Pritchard is playing him over him. You know what I mean? Like if you have these shooters, I really feel you need to give him run. Even if Pritchard comes in, if you have a shooter, you got to give him looks when he comes on the court, you know, just so that way he feels it. Cause you never know, like, you saw someone like um, like Kerr does with Poole. And I'm not saying Pritchard and Poole are on the same level. But, you know, if Poole's feeling it a little bit, you know, he's going to give him a little more run than he normally does. So I really feel that um, that's one thing Nadaku has to do better is get his shooters more time and run more sets for their shooters when they come into games off the bench. Yeah. I did like that you mentioned the Rubio trade because I was trying to think of a specific player for them, but Rubio is Rubio would be. Yeah, I think Rubio would be a phenomenal trade for the them. O- only thing that worries me is I feel like Marcus Smart can do it because there's some times where he's under control, he's settled, he's actually running the offense, and then there's these other times where it's like, what are you doing? Like taking these boneheaded threes, rushing shot clock. So I don't know. But there's more time in clutch situations where that's who he is. And I kind of feel like, <coughs> excuse me, the whole second half of the season, they played subpar comp. And plus, and because they played subpar comp. They were blowing everyone, teams out, and they didn't have any clutch minutes. Everyone's hyping them up. Um, now, don't, now you, you, you play who's in front of you, and they beat who's in front of you. So you, can, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I think it's going to be tougher to repeat and get to the finals because the one team I think about is the Oklahoma city thunder, you know, when they had Westbrook, Harden, Durant and Serge, and they got to that final got swept by the heat. Never been back. Do you think they could go down that road? (laughs) I could see it because like we mentioned in the Eastern Conference already, like there's just so many different teams. Miami's going to get stronger. Bucks are going to get stronger. Um, other teams are going to figure it out. I still see them being competitive. I just don't know if I'm ready to say that they'll be back in the finals within the next two years. I, you know, I, I don't think they're going to be back in the final. I'll give Stevens all the credit in the world. You know, he noted he he got he brought Allen. Trading for Derek White, White was a great trade. But I just don't know. Like, I just kind of feel like you kind of – like, you you look at it. Okay, let's just kind of, like, take a step back. You beat the Nets. Okay, that's fine. You know, the Nets had a million issues. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. You beat the Bucks with no Middleton in seven. You went to seven with the Heat, and the Heat for the, for the back part had no hero. P.J. Tucker was her. Jimmy yeah. Butler was her. You know, it went to seven. You know, and it went to seven. It went to seven, dude. You know, like. So if you had to power rank the teams next year, the top of the Eastern Conference. Bucks one. 
I, I like honestly, I think like I'll be honest, and maybe I sound like a homer because the, the Bucks and Pistons are my team. I think it's the Bucks one, and I think it's a big drop to two. Like right now, like we don't know, like we don't know what these teams are gonna do, but I think it's a big drop to two right now. What what about you? Uh, I think the Bucks are number one. I wouldn't say it's a steep drop off, um, but then again, they definitely would have won that series without Middleton, so or with Middleton. So, I mean, like honestly, like just let's like I'm just pulling up the conference, like net, like assuming everyone's healthy. I think I I think the Bucks are better than the Heat. Do you think the Heat are better than the Celtics? Everyone healthy. No, I think the Celtics had chances to close it out, but just didn't. So weren't very opportunistic. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're better than the 76ers. I'd say they're the second best team in the East. Okay. All right. Um, third, but I know the Nets. I just can't count the Nets in the upper echelon of the East until it's proven, you know. And I mean, the team, you know, the team that I think could surprise people, you know, if they stay healthy. I mean, we need to remember Cleveland Cavaliers, as crazy as it sounds, were top four in the East until everyone started dropping like flies. Oh, yeah. They were the most unlucky team with injuries and COVID. So you got to figure that. I mean, you got to figure the Raptors are going to have something with the steps they're going to make. And the, like the um, uh, Scotty Barnes' development, Siakam's development, Van Vliet. You know, are they going to, the big rumor with them, though, is they could trade OG Ananomi. Because he wants more minutes. OG could be moving somewhere. Um, you know, the Pistons, God only knows what's going to happen with them. If yeah, Cam- one of the teams could take a jump. One of those young teams, Hunt Hornets, Pistons, um, Magic. I don't know. You, you know, what could happen at least. Wizards and Beal? Are they going to move Beal? Um, yeah, so it's really going to be an interesting offseason. And can, yeah. Yeah, can we switch gears for a second and switch to the Western Conference? Because a big trade happened with uh, Christian Wood. I know we were talking about the Mavericks last time. Oh, what were your thoughts on that? Wood was 28th in pick and roll scoring while rolling to the basket last, last year with no point guard doing that with Porter and and and, and the kid Green. Now you're going to do that with Luka Dantich. So, I mean, that right there has me a little intrigued. But then another part of me sits back and goes, is Wood just that guy that puts up good numbers with shitty teams? I think this is the perfect opportunity to find the answer to that question. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one thing that were they gave up virtually nothing, so I think it was a good deal. Oh, I think it was right? a great trade. Because like, yeah, it was a great trade. Cut. But at the same time, a little part of me is like, was he the right center for them? You know, I don't know if he'll fit in the Jason Kidd system and be that rim protector that they they need him to be. You know, who yeah. would have been per- you know would be perfect for that? Your boy Turner. Yeah, yeah, Miles Turner would have been great, but I mean, I mean, he probably would have taken more to get him. So, but I mean, you look at a team like the Pacers. You have this great asset, in Miles Turner. Why haven't you moved him? I don't, I don't think the Pacers know what they're doing. I mean, and you know, it's kind of funny. I have the Pacers team pulled up right here. I mean, just kind of look at this team for a second, dude. <laughs> Excuse me, Jesus. Um, you know, you got Brogdon, Heal, TJ Warner coming back, Miles Turner. Oh, man, dude, like that's, that's a decent little squad right there. A team that I feel call me crazy should be competing for the plan. What say you? Oh, for sure. Like um the sum is less than the parts, it feels like in this case. I you know, I just kind of feel that the NBA right now. Is just so wide open. You know, we're going to have the trade is coming. You know, the Pistons moving Grant. You know, what's going to happen with Kyrie? What are the Lakers going to do? There's all these rumors with the Lakers of what, um, you know, what the Celtics are going to do. But one team we need to touch on is the Phoenix Suns, man. Like, what are they going to do? You know, like, honestly, like you look at them and, <coughs> excuse me, you need to figure out what Booker wants done. And then you have to figure something to do with Aiken and something to do with um, Chris Paul. But let me ask you this, because it's coming out. Did you hear the reason why they were upset with DeAndre Aiken? Mm -mm. 
Okay. Now, a young player, new in the league, a lot of money. You figure, hey, you know, out late partying, you know, like going to the club, you know, whatever. They were worried and upset. Are you ready for this? Like, are, are you ready for this? <laughs> now I think I know what it is, but yeah, tell me. Go ahead. He was playing too many video games. Yeah, I heard. Wasn't he like up to like two, three in the morning every night or something like that? Something crazy, I heard. He's in his place playing video games. I know, but that, yeah, that's such a better problem than anything else he could be doing at 27 I mean, years old. Let's just think about this, dude. He's in his house. He's not driving drunk. He's not doing drugs. He's in the confines of his own place playing fucking video games. Shame on him. To me, you know what this screams like? Are you ready for this? What? A cheap owner that doesn't want to go over the luxury tax. Am I wrong? Uh, just finding like anything wrong. Okay. Find anything wrong to move the player to get out of them. You know, like to me that to me that's what this move says. What what what's coming out if they move Aiden? Um, it really just says, hey, you know what? We're cheap. We don't want to pay. What 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 do you think? I think that's a just an interesting storyline because the Pistons. Hornets, somebody's going to throw Aiden a bag this summer. Um, and it's just going to be up to Phoenix to match. And it, from all reports, it certainly doesn't seem like they – it seems like they'd be extremely reluctant to. Uh, but how do they get better? How do they replace him? Because he was their third best player. So, I don't know. It's an interesting storyline. Real quick. Cool. Last, last mock trade here. I mean, you know, you get you get a center, you get a, another wing score. You know, I I think this works out for both. What do you think? I think so. I mean, I think that's going to be better than any other solution um, to try to move Aiton. I think that's the best case scenario. Because sign in trades, you got to remember, for most sign in trade teams, it doesn't usually work out. They don't recoup the same value. But if they can get like a good player like Jeremy Grant, then that's a win. You know. I think that'd be a huge win. Pistons aren't going to resign them. They're looking to move them. Um, <coughs> now, before we sign off, I did want to bring up this one video right here. Hold on. Let me let me turn on the sound. It's a little too loud. So Bagley's playing pickup. One of the people is the girl. There, boom. Drives right past Mark Bagley right there, right to the hole. Pump fake, goes right by him behind the back to her partner. They're playing two on two. She didn't just throw oh, it behind the that. back on him. Look at that, dude. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, look at that, dude. Look at that. Look at that. Watch this. Look at You know, over Bagley, zero effort. Like, doesn't even close on her. Look at him. Look at him. And she turns. Wow, no. <laughs> the, the, the disrespect. <laughs> And that's why you're benched on the Sacramento Kings. Am I wrong? That oh, is yeah. why you were benched on the Sacramento Kings, my friend. Um, Sterling, I'd like to thank you for coming on. Um, as you know, the E Talk Two One Sports Show premieres July fifth. You are going to be on there at some time, depending on what your schedule is. Coming on talking, I have a feeling you're going to be a reg on that show if you're willing to. Uh, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Okay, so find me at on Instagram at Silver Star Sports. That's going to be Silver Star. There's an underscore and then sports. I've been kind of dry on the posting for a while, but I mean, I, NFL season is starting. Uh, some time has opened up for me, so I do have some content coming that I'm writing out. Um, it's going to be previews for all 32 NFL teams predictions, breakout players, so plenty of good stuff coming. Um, just be patient with me, <laughs> all that I ask. But, yeah, follow me along for the ride. Um, I'm definitely going to be on ETA or Eric's show. Uh, so definitely just join us. But thanks for having me, as always. Always enjoy these times. Hey, man, you know, you're one of the 
one of the originals, man. I appreciate the time and the effort. Always prepared. Always enjoy talking sports with you. Guys, give Sterling a give it Sterling a follow. Thanks for coming on, my man. Enjoy yourself a good fourth, and we'll talk soon, my friend. Sounds good. Thank you.